Welcome back to Flushing It Out Career Edition. Today I'm with Gina Michak. Thank you so much, Gina. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here and thank you for having me. Yes, Gina is a baker from Gina's Kitchen. And so I would love, Gina, for you to share kind of how you got into that chosen career, you know, how you got into the career of, of being a baker and, you know, what, what does that entail? Okay, so it basically was accidentally because it was my hobby. Uh, became a stay-at-home mom after I had my first child and just started watching all of the Food Network shows. It was very popular back in the early 90s, you know. So I had all those home shows that I could watch and I just always liked baking and cooking. So when I started baking for friends' kids, um, or, hey, Gina, when you come to the potluck, would you bring your cupcakes or would you bring a cake? Uh, it just kind of accidentally happened. That's great. Because I think that shows you lean into your passion and you find your way. So um, now what education, training, and certif certifications do you need? And I, I think what's interesting to point out for, um, for you know, young adults watching mm -hmm. is that you... Um, there's different tracks that bakers can take. Yep. And so um, I think you give a great uh, uh, one track, you know, so, um, or one of the options I should say. So with the way you have built it, can you give a quick description of kind of what your training and whatnot has, has taken and then how that is working today? Okay, so um, I am not professionally trained. I did not go to culinary school. I'm self-taught. I'm a cookbook collector and I like to watch cooking videos and cooking shows. So I've done, I self-taught, uh, but with that being said, I knew I wanted to start my business off on the right footing. So I did research into food incubation kitchens, commercial kitchens, licensing, business insurance. Uh, I ended up taking a quick, it was a three month intensive course with a food incubator. It was the business side of running a food business. They did not teach us how to cook or bake. You came with that knowledge. They taught you the numbers. They taught you for numbers like finances, pricing, uh, shopping with wholesale. They basically taught all the boring stuff. I just want to bake but you have to know the finances and you have to understand the taxes, paying taxes monthly, quarterly, however much your monthly quarterly income is, you have to pay taxes. So I am a licensed business in the state of Virginia. Um, I also have my food safety managers uh, certification. So the one certification that I chose to get, I'm inspected through the Department of Agriculture at the small kitchen that I rent in Old Town. So my business license is through the city of Manassas. So, so you do your cooking out of the home? Um, for most for, of, yes, yes. For the commercial, for the Especially stuff for farmers markets and any vendor shows. Because mm -hmm. there's certain, um, if you can confirm, because there's certain regulations if yes. you're going to sell like that. Yes, I do have res recipes that have been uh, approved and inspected by the Department of Agriculture. So all of my cupcakes, some of the cookies, anything that I sell at the farmer's market on a regular basis has a label that has been approved by the Department of Agriculture. That's great. I love, um, so I was talking about the different um, tracks because right. there's some that go to culinary schools, but that's mm -hmm. definitely not a requirement. You know, that's kind of, if you want to mm -hmm. go to one industry, which we can interview one day, but I think that, you know, um, I think Rachel Ray is one. Um, is she still on TV? If any of the kids watch her these days, um, but she's someone who I don't believe was professionally trained and just kind of fell into it. And so, yep. um, but I'm so glad you brought up all of the requirements because just because you're self-taught doesn't mean you just get to just sell it. And, <laughs> you know? and actually I will share with you, you have to check within your county uh, where you live in the state of Virginia. Some of the rules and regulations are a little bit more relaxed depending on where you go. Um, Prince William County, not so much. <laughs> so there are a lot of, there are a lot of other steps. And I mm -hmm. do have to say that in working with the commercial kitchen and taking that food business course, I, I do have to say that even my own personal track, what I once thought I wanted to do shifted. Um, I thought I wanted to do wholesale, large amounts of cookies and pastries 
in some shop, but it ended up that's not really the track that I wanted that I want to be on now. Now I want to do small scale. Um, I want to meet the people at the markets and I want to work with kids in the kitchen and teach them simple techniques and things like that. So it opened up other doors for me. That's great. I think um, that's important to see um, how your view changed. So how did you get linked up with that class? Um, actually, I had been researching how do you have a food business in Virginia? And I did researching. And then one morning I was watching the news and it's really funny story. I was just watching channel nine news and they had a little clip on about food trucks and the boom in food trucks. And this was back in 2017. So I watched this little snippet on the news about this food incubator where food trucks go and the owners can make prepare the food in the commercial kitchen. They house their trucks there and they have all the tools and wherewithal to run their food business out of their, out of this commercial kitchen. So I thought, Hmm. So I looked them up and they had a location at the time they had a location in Haymarket and they had a location in Lorton. Um, so I ended up taking their class at the Lorton location. Uh, met a lot of really nice other foodies, a lot with food trucks. So I don't have a food truck, but a lot it, a lot have food trucks, which are really pretty. And that's another interesting path right there. Yeah, 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 definitely. What does a typical day look like to you as far as like the hours you're working and the duties that you're performing? Okay, so for me, I can set my own hours because I am my own boss. Um, and I try to keep it Monday through Friday. I am an early riser, so I usually start by about six o'clock in the morning. And I try to end mm, between three and four maybe. There are days where I might be catching up on emails at night or maybe going over contracts, uh, taking care of ordering supplies and things like that. But my ordering of supplies right now, because I'm small, uh, I can do a lot of it on Amazon or through walmart.com. Uh, BJ is getting the wholesale prices without joining a bigger restaurant type uh, shop uh, because I don't need 500 pounds of flour yet, you know? Yes. Um, yes. So I do all, a lot of baking. The weeks that I have the market, I will bake on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays leading up to the Thursday farmer's market. Uh, I try to have all of my orders for the weekend picked up or delivered on Friday. Um, occasionally, depending on my weekends, I might make a delivery or accept a pickup on a Saturday morning. Um, but yeah, I just try to keep it to a Monday through Friday thing. And occasionally I'll answer an email at nine o'clock at night or, you know, shoot a quick text back to somebody. But I had to learn that over the last three years. Balance. What I was going to say too, um, you know, you talked about those hours and um, I would guess, I could be assuming wrong, but I would guess that there's been times where you've baked late into the night and you had yes. to learn how many jobs you can actually say yes to. Because in the beginning, you know, it's so easy when we have new businesses to want to say yes to everything, but then we yeah. learn like, this is too crazy. So you, you've probably had to adjust of what does, biz, how much business looks like 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. to kind yeah. of make that work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also like to sit down and have dinner at some point and I don't want to be eating my dinner at nine o'clock at night. Yes. Yes. Um, so as far as, um, you know, high schoolers that maybe have a passion for baking and whatnot, what kind of advice would you give them or what do you wish you would have known at their age? Um, well, I, I definitely, I wish I would have known about culinary school, but with that being said, had I known about culinary school, my life would have taken a completely different track. So uh, with that being said, I, they can, you know, when you're young, start off and, and, try things, try things to see if you like them. And don't be afraid to get into the kitchen and read a cookbook. They have a lot of good cookbooks out there on the market now specifically designed for teenagers. I actually sent my nephew two for his birthday um, because it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be very simple. Um, so I would say read, get out there. My grandmother always said, if you can read, you can cook. And 
she's right. You can read a cookbook, you can follow the instructions, you can cook. So I would just say, you know, watch, you know, watch Food Network, follow along and see what interests you. Um, if you like to bake, bake. If you like to cook, cook. Um, if you like to do both, do both. <laughs> Well, that's great, Gina. Thank you so much as um, we wrap up part one of our questions with you. I appreciate all your insight. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. We're going to be back soon with part two. And we're back with part two. <laughs> Gina, thank you so much. Gina Michak joining us for, whew, um, for fleshing out career advice. Gina is a baker from Gina's Kitchen. And so as we wrap up our bonus questions, Gina, what are some misconceptions about the baking world? Let's see, misconceptions. Um, that everybody is a home baker, uh, that it doesn't cost that much to bake anything. Um, what else? I would say, um, I would love to hear your insight on charging people. Because <laughs> if other, if um, when you are starting out in business, and doing something you love, which is as you shared in part one about how you just did it, of course, yeah. for free, just for your kids. And I'm sure you helped your friends out and made their kids birthday cakes. And so um, how was that transition to charging for your service? Uh, well, it was hard. And there are, I'll be honest, even to this day, I've been in business for going on almost four years. Sometimes it's still hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I still sometimes have a hard time with friends who want to pay me what the value is or what is on my website mm -hmm. that, you know, um, because I'm just like, no, you're my friend. But I went to that food business course for a reason to learn how to appropriately price my um, product. And the product cost varies. Um, during COVID when butter and flour were still can be, sh butter is, in, is, you could find it now, but yeast, flour, sugar, um, you couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. So when you did find it, $75, a 25 pound bag on Amazon, you have to just, you have to look at the cost of your ingredients and you have to price it appropriately. And then you have to know that you're worth that. It costs money to buy that nice box, the cake board, the labels for everything the real butter, the real vanilla, the real flour, where, you know, those kinds of things all add up in my time. So I do have to every day remember, you know, I am worth that and more because not only did I put effort into all my, you know, product, I put a lot of love. Like I love doing what I do and I get so excited. Today I have someone coming to pick up a Minnie Mouse birthday cake oh. and I don't even want to give it away. I love it. <laughs> Because it's so nice. But, well, yeah. that's, that's really valuable because I think so many people have a hard time charging for something that they love, mm -hmm. but you brought up good point, great points about the education you've had, the skill you have, and then of course your time. And, you know, I think um, it's important that we don't undervalue ourselves. So Right. Can't do that. And you also can't forget about the packaging concept, the packaging part of mm -hmm. it. Yes. Butter, flour, sugar, eggs, milk all cost money. But again, um, the box you use, the all packaging, that. yeah, all that. So what has surprised you most about entering, you know, now that you are an official professional baker with a business, what has surprised you most about running? Um, actually, that people will try to haggle prices. Mm. Um, I see it more at vendor events, um, but it would never occur to me to go to someone's table at a vendor event and say, well, I don't think this is worth $3. How about if I give you two? Um, so I, I think that's it. Like the numbers of people that feel comfortable trying to whittle the prices down. I'm glad never, you shared that. Never on a custom order. Um, if a person doesn't want to pay the price that's reflected on the website or mm -hmm. once I confirm that the cake is X amount. I've never had that happen, but just, mm -hmm. you know, in person. That's a great um, tip. Like, it's a great point to bring up though for, for young people watching, because as you get into a business, especially if you're an entrepreneur, it's all, you hear so much about 
finding your ideal client and not every client is meant to be your client. And so the ones who are haggling with you, you know, sometimes we take it personally, you know, but it's like, oh, they're just not my ideal client. Like, I mean, it's just like, as if you have cakes from Costco, cakes from Wegmans, cakes from you, you know, like they're all, they all can be great for different reasons, but they're all different. They all have a different ideal client. So and what I would, what I would interject in that is that don't compare yourself to others who are doing the same type of business. Mm -hmm. Um, I know there are lots of other solopreneur bakers out there, especially in Northern Virginia, but we all, maybe we all make cakes and cupcakes and cookies, but we all have our own way about doing it. And our prices might fluctuate, but again, you have to look deep into what are the expenses that you're putting into your business? If you are, my best example is if you're, if I'm using real vanilla and right now that can be anywhere from 25 to $30 a bottle, like even at BJ's for a 16 ounce bottle of pure vanilla extract, it's a lot, mm-hmm. um, which means the cost of my bake goods are going to have to go up a little bit, but they're going to taste an awful lot better than imitation vanilla Mm -hmm. um, does. And that's just my personal preference, but just don't compare yourself to others who are doing the same type of work you are. Exactly. Cause we each have our own niche and provide and, you know, kind of have their different things Um, to wrap it up. What, um, what are some maybe, um, gifts, talents, interests that would make someone a great fit for the baking world? I would say um, someone that's always interested in learning how to do new things, trying to keep up with trends Uh, in baking. You know, the trends are like flavors and maybe different decorating techniques for cakes and cupcakes. Also know what you're interested in and what you like to do, because just because everybody looks like they want to cover two tier cakes and fondant doesn't mean that you have to. Um, You also can, I also try to be aware of the bakers in my area that do the things that I'm not as enthused about doing so that when I have a customer that calls me and says, can you do this? It might be that one thing that's not on my menu because it's not my wheelhouse. Uh, so I would say no, know, know the people around you that can do what you don't. So you can build clientele that way too. I think it, there's nothing better than when someone says to me, oh, Gina, I can't help you with that, but I know that Samantha can. Mm-hmm. And then I'll always remember, oh, hey, she you know, was so nice. I wasn't able to use her that time but I'm going to use her the next time that I need something else. So definitely that collaboration over competition. Yeah, absolutely. Gina, thank you so much. Your insight is very valuable. And not only are you valuable, your treats are delicious. So um, how can people get in touch with you? um, Especially if they're in the Northern Virginia area. Oh, sure. Um, Well, I'm on social media. So I'm on Facebook at From Gina's Kitchen, uh, Instagram at From Gina's Kitchen. I have a website, www.fromgenuskitchen.com. So yeah, yeah, you can reach me that way or you can shoot me an email, ginamichak at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gina. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much. It was nice talking with you. Bye.